Michael says he was taken aboard a spacecraft where the aliens performed surgery on him. Pat remembers seeing half-human, half-alien children during her close encounter. And Cindy says she has physical evidence that she was abducted by aliens. Later, three prominent UFO researchers, including a Harvard psychiatrist, will be here to back up their stories. They also believe what many of us find unbelievable, that UFOs really exist. First, please welcome Michael and Pat. Nice of you to come. Good to be here. Michael, Michael, let me start with you. You say you were abducted by aliens. How did you remember that experience? Well, it initially came out under hypnosis, and I really had no remembrance of it before that. Before you went through the hypnosis? That's right. And this happened about 20 years ago? The hypnosis, the original experience did, yes. And what happened to you during that experience? Um, I was driving home, it was very late at night, and this was in Maryland, and I lived in Baltimore. My girlfriend lived in Frederick, about 40 miles away, and it was very late at night, and on my way home, I saw lights coming down in my rearview mirror following my car and they didn't come from up above like it was a car coming over the horizon they came out of the sky and um, the next thing I remember my car was ripped off the side of the road I thought I was gonna crash the car skidded to a stop I don't remember hitting my head I think I must have though because I do remember staggering out of the car and there was a bright light similar to one of those in my eyes and the next thing I remember was standing next to the front of my car and there were five little guys there. One, actually, four of them were standing. One of them was digging in the ground with something. And at that point, I was terrified. Uh, the eyes are something that you'll never forget. Um, if, I could, if I can say something right up front, um, this was not a fun experience. At no time in my life have I ever been more terrified. And once you look into the eyes of these beings, whatever they are, you will never forget it. And it changes you forever. It changed your life forever? Once I remembered, yes. All right, yes. because there are people who think this is the ultimate great adventure, being abducted by aliens, and you're here to say that it's not. No, it's not. All right, uh, did they take you someplace? I was taken into this craft. I assume it's what was following me. I never saw that object that was on the ground actually flying, but I assume it was a flying saucer. They took me inside. At one point, I remember I was on, a, on this sort of operating table, and they did all kinds of experiments and things to me. What did they do to you? At one point, I was lying on my stomach. I had no clothes on. And I felt my back being opened up. I felt one of them sort of picking at my spine. There was no pain, but I could feel the vibration coming from inside. Uh, there's no scar. The thing that they did that I really found just unbelievably humiliating is... They put this thing, it was similar to, well, it was just some kind of a metallic-looking tube over my genitals. And it made me have an orgasm in about two seconds. And it was not fun. All I can tell you is that I know exactly how a woman feels when she's raped, because that's the kind of degradation and humiliation I felt. Okay, now did you, you didn't remember this experience at all? Well, I, I rem once I underwent the first hypnotic regression, I started remembering other things and I asked the, you know, for it to be possible that I should remember everything that I would come up with. Uh, since I've, well, it took me about two and a half years to undergo four sessions. Um, I was devastated after each one. I couldn't go back. Why were you devastated? It was a lot to deal with. You have to understand that this was the, the mid-70s. There were close encounters hadn't come out yet. In fact, when the movie came out, I was there with my wife looking at it saying, no, they got it wrong. They didn't look like that. Um, and people, there was nobody I could talk to. What about you? How did you feel about it? Did you think you were crazy? I still think half of me is crazy. Why? I don't know. I don't know how it can be real, and yet I don't have an explanation as to how it's not. Did you go to doctors after yes. this, uh, after you found out through, through hypnosis? Fortunately, I did. Um, I took polygraph tests. I had all kinds of psychological profile tests done on me. Uh, I had an orth orthopedic surgeon examine me. And essentially, they all came up with the same conclusion. And it wasn't one that made me very happy. Um, it was not my imagination. It was not something I concocted. I was not lying. It was something that happened that was just incredibly traumatic outside of the normal realm of my everyday experience 
They, would, they were not willing to say, yes, these little green Martians came down and took you away. But they had no explanation as to what it was. But they said something real clearly happened to you because you were showing symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome? Right. Well, something clearly happened to me. There's, there's no doubt about that. And does this drive you, I mean, does this torture you? Only when I think about it. All right, Pat, I saw you nodding over there because this is something as recently as two years, two years ago, it's my understanding. You went right. through uh, an abduction by aliens. Right. What happened to you? Um, well, I was lying on my bed around 9 or 9.30. I had a headache and it seemed to move into my eye. After a while, I became aware of this blue beam coming down from the sky. It was about 25 feet from my home. I got so scared. I, I was so scared. I ran downstairs and ran out the um, front door and I looked around the street and um, I wanted to, to find help. And down at the end of the street there were three uh, police cruisers with their headlights on. They had pulled onto some vacant land and they had their headlights aimed at my home and they were standing outside of the cars in a little knot, maybe five or six men, they were all holding flashlights, and no one was moving. I mean, even the flashlights didn't move. I started to, to move toward them, and just watching them not moving just scared the wits out of me. It was surreal? It was surreal. There were no birds, um, no toads, no, I mean, it was springtime. Usually there's a lot of noise at night. It, I was the only thing that moved. You also underwent hypnosis. Right. And found out subsequently that, that you two, in fact, had come in contact with beings, creatures, aliens. Right. What happened to you? Um, well, I... And this particular incident after the blue beam, I woke the next morning with a um, eye injury. There was a red line going from corner to corner and blood pooling up in the bottom. I went to the eye doctor who uh, diagnosed it as a broken blood vessel and a, a scrape and a clogged tear duct. Um, under hypnosis, I recalled a curved, you know, being aboard a ship, this, this one that I call the doctor, leaning in towards me on my right side and bringing a, a curved blade um, towards my eye. And then I didn't want to remember anymore. The doctor was an alien. Right. And what did the doctor look like? Well, he looks, um, he had the grayish skin. He was, I say, about four and a half or five feet. He had large eyes. But I, I felt that his eye was filmy. It wasn't all black. There, it was kind of filmy looking. And there was some blotching over his cheek. And I only saw him in uh, profile because I saw him peripherally. And also he had vertical wrinkles around his mouth. So he may have been older. I don't know. I didn't, didn't ask Michael this. Did, did they talk? Did, he, did this person talk to you? No. Uh, they, they let you know what they want. They communicate telepathically. At one point, I was looking at these little guys, and I was so terrified. I was an athlete at the time, and I was so terrified, I immediately, immediately thought of hurting them, you know, just pounding my, my hand on his, on his head. And exactly at that moment, I was paralyzed. No pain, but I could not move at all. Pat, you also had another experience where you saw these so-called hybrid children who looked half human, half alien. Um, I don't know when this happened, but I feel like it happened also when I was older and I was just in a room with three children and um, an adult that I call a woman only because I felt she was a woman or maybe because her job was caring for children. At any rate, I felt like the children were um, very ill, dying, in fact. And um, as she communicated a picture to me that there were hundreds of them, it, it was really upsetting. What did they look like? Well, they looked more human than alien, although their heads were enlarged almost like um, a children with, uh, who have hydrocephalus. There was a, a prominent forehead and the features appeared to be compressed. And this was a very upsetting, it seems to be affecting you right now as you're yeah, talking well, about it. You know, it's not their fault. I mean, 
the children and to me they're the really the real victims all right now have you had other experiences i mean are there indications to you that that somehow the aliens are still coming in contact with you or that they're still visiting you yes i moved um from the place where the blue beam came down i moved um and I didn't see them for over a year, and then I have a dark room out behind my home. I was printing out there for a show one night, and I, I came out of the dark room, and there they were. Uh, I also recalled an abduction experience in, um, is either last week of March or the first week of April this year. Do you feel, you know, people, we've had a few, you've heard them, a few snickers in the audience. Sure. Let's be honest about it. And yet I polled the audience before we started, and, and the majority of them believe in UFOs. Do you feel a little strangely talking about this in public? Well, I don't have the luxury of disbelief anymore. I mean, I ignored so many things for so long. And, I mean, I wish I... I could be a disbeliever. Why do you wish I, I you do, could be a disbeliever? Because it's a lot more comfortable. Uh, this is a hard thing to deal with. I feel sorry for people like myself. You know, we're victimized twice. This happens to us, and, and then we're greeted with Snickers. Not that I wouldn't do that also. Right. But I can only say that this is not like seeing Elvis at the Kmart. I mean, this is a whole other thing. You broke the tension. All right. right. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to meet another true, be <coughs> true believer, Cindy, who says she has physical evidence to prove that she was abducted by aliens. We'll be back. talking with people who say they've been abducted by aliens and joining us now is Cindy who says that she too discovered through hypnosis that she was taken aboard a UFO by aliens. Did this happen when you were very young? Uh, yes, it happened when I was very young. Um, something I didn't discover through hypnosis that happened to my mother and I as we were walk, um, driving to uh, my ballet class and we saw a UFO out our window and it came down lower and lower and until it was right above a telephone pole and our car stalled and there were about 12 other cars stalled around us and um, white beams of light were shooting out from the beam from the craft and one hit me in the face and I was paralyzed it came through the roof of the car it didn't come through the window and I remember um, Another um, person next to us had a white beam of light in his face. My mother asked him if he thought it was a UFO, and he said he thought it was. And I saw a tall, thin man, I thought, walking in between our cars. And when he reached our car, my mother um, went to sleep. And then three small beings came and took me out of the car and floated me into the craft. Okay, three small beings look, and what did they look like? They had large heads and big black eyes, and I, it was very fuzzy. I was almost passed out at that time. I and they floated you up onto the spacecraft, and then what happened? Well, they put me onto a table, and they showed me a long needle, and they put the edge of the needle into my navel, and then they floated me back down to my car, and shut the door on my back and my mother woke up and um, we continued on to my ballet class and when we got there my um, class was nearly over I had missed an hour of it and um, my mother called the um, FAA to report the craft and other people had called also and including a lieutenant colonel from the Air Force all right now you had another incident happen to you um, well, three months later, they came back, and um, they took me from my room. Actually, I walked out into the front yard. My parents were standing out in the front yard also, and um, took me aboard the craft and, and removed something that looked like a placenta attached to an umbilical cord. From your body? Yes. 
Now, w what are you saying happened to you? Well, it's, it's, I can only speculate that they um, must have put something in me to... I think they... You feel you were artificially me. inseminated? You yes. feel you were impregnated by them? Yes. And they were harvesting... It's crazy it sounds. Well, a lot of things sound crazy. A lot of things are inexplicable. Doesn't mean they don't happen. Um, but you're saying you feel that you were somehow impregnated and they were taking the child? Yes. Well, as, as three months into the pregnancy. All right, now, do you tell people this story? Do you share this story with people? I do share the story with people. I think it's a very important thing to share. Also, um, I, I know that it happens to so many people, and if I had thought that I was alone in this, it would have been very difficult. And I am still searching to this day for other people who were there in the intersection with me and possibly the lieutenant colonel who saw what I saw. Okay, but are you generally greeted with skepticism from people? Do people... Yes, but it's surprising how many people do believe this, because... Oh. Yeah, I mean, I talked to the audience during the break, and how many of you in the audience believe these stories? A lot of you do. And yeah. I'm not trying to convince anyone that it's No, 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 true. we understand. Uh, no, 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 but you have to understand also that according to a Roper poll, I think nearly four million Americans say that they've had a similar experience to you folks. So, I mean, you're not talking about a small number of people. How has this changed your life? I would assume that it has. Well, I think about it every night when I go to sleep because recently I became engaged and I live with my fiancé and now they're visiting us together and, and he woke with an incision scar in his back about two inches long. So I know it's still happening and it concerns me about having my own children but um, through help of friends and people I know, um, I'm getting through it. Okay. I just wanted to know, how long was it from the time you had the experience until you were able to remember it? You're talking to me? Yeah. It was about five or six years, I think. So you didn't remember anything in between that the, time? To be fair, the only thing I do remember was the feeling of one, this one particular stretch of road that used to scare me to death for no reason. Okay. Let me ask you, um, Cindy, I didn't ask you about the physical evidence that uh, you claim to have sustained from one of these abductions. What, what did they do to you? Well, the first abduction I remember, um, I remembered without regression hypnosis. Also, I um, was taken aboard a craft and they showed me a small BB and they um, told me they were going to put it in my nose because they had two tubes going from my nose to my feet and that it would not hurt, but they took an instrument and um, put the BB on the end of it and punctured the soft palate of my mouth and um, it hurt very badly mm -hmm. and um, blood spurted onto my gown that they had given me and I still have those puncture wounds in my mouth. Which have never been explained by a doctor? Um, he asked me what I put up there because it, it has scar tissue around it so it was obviously done after birth. Okay. Doesn't it just seem suspicious that you only remember a lot of it under hypnosis and that maybe you're oppressing something else that happened, some kind of abuse or something like that in your childhood or something? That is a theory that's been proposed that this is a mask for sexual abuse that happens and this is the way those memories come forth and that's what you're saying. Anybody have an answer to that? My experiences were not sexual, so um, that, you know, and no one's tortured my eye in my childhood, so... That you don't pretty find much that flies out the window. Anybody else? <coughs> no? My, my initial experience happened when I was five years old, and uh, there was nothing sexual about that at the time at all. Okay, well, we have three prominent UFO researchers coming up next, and I'm sure they can answer that question among many of the others we'll have for them, and we'll be back with them. now talking about UFOs and alien abductions and we welcome three of the top researchers in the field. Bud Hopkins, who's worked with over 400 people as a hypnotherapist to help people remember their abduction experiences. Also Dr. David Jacobs, an associate professor of history at Temple University, who's written the new book Secret Life, First-Hand Accounts of UFO Abductions. And Dr. John Mack, a psychiatrist at Harvard Medical School and we welcome you all to the program. Um, 
Dr. Jacobs, let me start with you because you've been studying UFOs for over 25 years. You're one of the experts. Why should we believe in UFOs? Well, we have to believe in it, I think, because the evidence is fairly overwhelming. This is something we've been involved with uh, for f over four decades now. It's persistent and consistent. It, it refuses to go away, and uh, there's more evidence for its existence on a daily basis. Uh, we just uh, can't ignore it. Uh, it. It's a fairly overwhelming well, situation. Well, I was going to say, we have an aerospace engineer who's coming on in the next segment. I'm not sure he agrees with any of that, but we'll let him fight that battle with you directly. Let me ask you, uh, you have written this new book which talks about first-hand accounts. What were the patterns you found uh, in terms of these alien abductions? Well, basically the patterns that we found were that people were describing a series of physical, mental, and uh, reproductive procedures that were performed upon them uh, during one of the uh, abduction events. Uh, what is important about this is that these accounts are precisely detailed. They are convergent in their details. That is to say, all the stories appear to match. Uh, they are detailed to the point of the function of various instruments that are used upon them. Uh, they are told by people from all walks of life, uh, from all over the society, uh, who don't know each other and who could not possibly have picked up the majority of these accounts in the press. Okay, Bud Hopkins, you have worked with over 400 folks as a licensed hypnotherapist. Uh, these three folks have been very, very brave and come forward to talk about what's happened to them. But the vast majority of these people uh, simply do not want publicity because they're afraid of ridicule, they're afraid of problems with their jobs, their lives, and so forth. Because of a climate of ridicule that has been brought upon this, we can't have that. We have to have an investigation. We have to have serious looking into this, and this is what we're really here to demand. Okay, wh why do you want people to look into it? Because it is the most important event in all of human history, if it's true. And I have no doubt whatsoever that it is true. All right, Dr. John Mack, you're a Harvard psychiatrist. Do you think it's true? Do you think it's the most important event in human history? When I first heard about this, I didn't believe it at all. Uh, somebody says, you want to meet Bud Hopkins, who's he? This was two and a half years ago. Oh, he's a man who believes in people, stories of people who have been taken on to spaceships. I thought, he must be crazy, and the people he's working with must be not so at all. Uh, what I discovered was that he was talking about people who are completely sincere. They don't claim they've been taken by aliens anywhere. They're very reluctant to come forward with their stories. The stories that they were telling consistently as I began to meet with these people myself, there was nothing in my psychiatric work over 40 years that prepared me for the consistency of these stories, the fact that they're told by children as young as two years old with physical marks, cuts, scoop marks, and the rest, the association with UFOs and that these are not people who are mentally ill. And there's nothing in my background that prepared me for this set of right. experiences. As a psychiatrist, you are telling us they're not mentally ill. These They're, are not delusions we're talking about. Absolutely not. They, they are troubled people because, as you heard from Pat and Michael, traumatic. these are very disturbing experiences and they have a kind of post-traumatic quality to them. But it's not just post-traumatic because they, this can happen again to them at any time. It's not like over once it's happened. And those experiences are disturbing. But the disturbing feelings, experiences they have, does in no way accounts for the experience. What is causing this, that's the mystery. Can, can I say something? Please, Michael. I, I, I really wanted to meet Dr. Mack. I've never met him before because I was really hoping, in fact, doing it on the air, uh, I was hoping for him to say, well, there's another explanation for this. I don't have another explanation. Is there another plausible explanation? I've had people come to me saying they want to be told this is a dream, a fantasy. Even they want, I had a man that came to me just last week and said, I, doctor, I'm coming to you because I want you to tell me that I'm crazy. I don't want to believe that these experiences are real. The implications for this person's worldview are so staggering. But as Freud once said, theory doesn't prevent facts from showing up. Okay, let me just ask you about the basic technique, though, that has brought these stories uh, to the fore, and that is this regression hi hypnosis. May I, may I say something about that? I think people think that you are uh, put under hypnosis and you're very relaxed, and, and you, you ask these questions, what happened? You say, oh, I was taken aboard a, a spacecraft, and this happened. But I know, um, Michael and I both were with Bud Hopkins, it's not like that at all. When you get to that moment that you maybe have some missing time, a block of missing time, getting through that is the most 
a traumatic thing. I almost threw up all over. <laughs> no, I'm not suggesting it wasn't traumatic, Cindy. That's not the point I was about to make. What I'm saying is there have been, as you're well aware, gentlemen, some critics of this particular technique. Uh, Dr. Still... Mor Martin Orn at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, one of your colleagues, says this is something that induces people to have fantasies. It's not allowable in court to have t uh, well, testimony sorry, that comes that's, out that's, of that's... hypnosis. <laughs> Well, no, 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 I'm, I'm, but I'm just, you know, yeah. this is, I'm trying to throw out some of the criticism here to get, you know, yeah. different uh, sides. No, I, I respect that uh, gentleman a great deal, but it's nonsense to attribute this to the hypnosis itself. I, increasingly, I'm seeing people who remember a good deal of the story Absolutely. before hypnosis. Right. They okay. remember being taken on, the, question, though, taken on to the spacecraft, they remember the beans, but the, the experience is so disturbing that the mind puts it down and puts it out of mind and anything we can use to help people relax and go inward and bring back the experience can help bring it forward but to say that because they're filling out the experience with hypnosis that therefore the hypnosis okay, generates it's not, not right. Michael I didn't know had even remembered this until he went under hypnosis. That's he, right. he remembered a, a terror I, of a certain I, I stretch of highway. I particular, remember a particular <coughs> incident. I had no way of knowing exactly what it was about, though. See, I think the most important point to realize is that, is that at least 25% of the uh, recollections of abduction experiences have nothing to do with hypnosis. They're remembered absolutely straightforwardly. They flat out. And they match exactly what the other 75% okay. that come out under it. So hypnosis has never been an issue. Okay, Pat. I wanted to say something about being hypnotized. I, I worked with Bud also. It's not like you are a mindless zombie and someone is just dropping ideas into your head. You begin with an incident you have a partial memory of, and under hypnosis he'll say, where are you? Do you see anything? Are you alone? You supply the answers, and you, I mean, I felt like I could get up and leave the room if I wanted to. Okay. Uh, it was not um, some kind of drugged semi comatose No, we're trying state. to understand for those of us who haven't it, been through like this trying to understand able what to happens remember without a lot of external distractions you can concentrate very well on one specific thing that's all it is see jane what i think the critics don't realize is that <laughs> nothing that we've experienced prepares you for the power of what these people go through during the hypnosis sessions the, the intense fear the body shaking the the rage the, the sense of humiliation it's it's completely persuasive because of the emotional power of what comes forth it just cannot be fantasy it cannot be something that's made up okay. and that that's what's hard to convey if you're just looking at the content of the reports my, okay. my concept of hypnosis before i was with bud hopkins was that i was going to wake up you know nude on a stage barking like a dog or something i mean i had well. i had i had no idea that you it it really is whatever it's you you're in control and it's just a form of concentration okay well i know we've got to take a break right now and the audience has lots of questions and comments when we come back we're going to meet the aerospace engineer who says that as far as he knows there isn't any physical evidence of these abductions and we'll talk about that when we get back Back now and joining our discussion on UFO abductions is a man who definitely is not a believer. Jim Oberg is working on the U.S. Space Shuttle program. Jim, you're an aerospace engineer. You've been a space nut all your life. You're into space. Tell us about the scientific and physical evidence that we were hearing about before. We're seeing a lot of stories, and they're wonderful stories, and these are people who are very sincere. I don't think one has to assume that people are crazy or that they're here for the money to say that the stories aren't believable. The stories are unbelievable because we're here. these kinds of stories, the kinds of accounts we're hearing, are really very familiar from hundreds of years and thousands of years ago of encounters with strange creatures, whether they're ghosts, whether they're witches, or whether they're goblins. Now the, the mythology we have around us these times, these years, are the space aliens. We're immersed in that. And the question is, which came first, the stories of the space aliens or the Hollywood movies? Okay, but how could people have so many, you know, tens of thousands of people have consistent accounts, describe the same sort of creatures? But these aren't consistent. We all heard descriptions Excuse just a me, little Mr. while Oberg, ago. I have to interrupt you. Yes. What you're saying, with all due respect, is semi-nonsense, okay? And I'll tell you why. Because there are certain people who say certain things. There are certain people who will say certain things that I know absolutely are exactly what I saw because number one, I... I what, you did, I what you saw was no scar or... Uh, we hear people who had a scar in their back or no scar in their back. Right, we had just, a person let who let was naked, a person who was in a gown. Let me just finish we and I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Right, right, we wait a second, wait a second. Mr. These Oberg, are not I would like to get but, Mr. Oberg's point of view, Michael, on this first. I think it's only fair. We've heard a lot from, you know, okay, folks about UFOs and we'll get to that. Um, 
No, I, I think, you know, we're looking at all different sides of this, and, and you don't share, uh, obviously, that these... Well, the descriptions we've seen of, 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 these, of these large headed up uh, with olive eyes and with, uh, with no ears and no hair are descriptions we've, we've had on television and the movies and before people started reporting them. It wasn't just uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the movie. It was, uh, well, the picture I was showing you, which you can't show on television because of copyright, Twilight Zone, 1962. So he shows it. I can't believe it. Okay. You, you can't show it, but I can hold it up oh. because this is a guy with olive eyes, no nose, no, mouth, no ears, no hair, four and a half feet tall who kidnapped Andy Devine on the third session of... Uh, okay. All right, now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Twilight Zone. What I wanna, all right, what I want to ask about, though, from your perspective as an engineer, you've been close to space, you work in the space program, is there scientific evidence? What well, your need for evidence, what we need to have if we're going to prove, if Bud's going to prove his point, is you need to have more than just a forced consistency that we see so often, and, you, and, and the hypnosis is the issue, because in your forward to the book, you said hypnosis is one of the key techniques. You've discovered, as you, as you realize, that the hypnotist, especially a hypnotist with a strong opinion about a subject, should not be allowed to be do working with the subject himself, because they can uh, uh, cue the witnesses you say deliberately. They can lead the witnesses. They, they, can, they do. It's been shown. The okay. studies have shown You're that. You're not answering my question. My question is about scientific, physical evidence. Well, all right. Something we can put in our hands. Right. Okay. Like a piece that falls off of the spacecraft. We've heard stories for 40 years, uh, and they've been reported. But nothing, nothing shows up. It's always something that's currently under study. Uh, we've, we've all gone gray out here, most of us, waiting for this physical evidence to show up. Okay, but, but Dr. Jacob says there's tons of physical evidence. It's overwhelming evidence. Well, how about a pound of it? How about something from my hand? Uh, well, you see, right? Uh, okay, okay. All uh, right, this, go ahead, bud. At this very moment, four apparent recovered implants are being studied at major universities by major people. The basic point is that these are all extraordinarily unusual objects. They have uh, very peculiar uh, properties which should not have been uh, made in this particular well, way. Well, let's wait and see the Okay, now just a minute. There's Nobel Prizes just, to be won. Just a minute, Jim. Because of the climate of ridicule that has been brought on this, the kind of virulent of opposition, if somebody's a full professor at a major university, he's not going to come forward with the idea that he can prove a negative beyond a shadow of a doubt. Prove the negative that this object could not be manufactured on Earth. We have evidence... There are hundreds of people who want to get Nobel Prizes in physics to discover this we stuff. Have ev okay, the point is that when, this, when these things are looked into as clear, clearly and scientifically and carefully as possible, they were going to be brought forward. But for 40 meantime, years we've had the, false, wait, alarms. Jim, 40 but, years false alarms. 40 years of false alarms, but this year, finally, we're going to get what something. You, what right. you're doing is putting, what, what you're doing is now putting pressure on the very people, uh, making it even I more difficult. I am putting pressure. I, 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 I have a question claims here. require extraordinary proof. Okay, and an extraordinary phenomenon demands an extraordinary investigation. How and, much money would you want for that? An extraordinary investigation is what is needed. And we need your help to look into this, not I've to stand on Okay, but let me ask you a question. If this is the biggest some, story in human history, Absolutely. why is so much ridicule heaped upon it? Why are people so skeptical? New ideas are always seen skeptically in the beginning. Exactly. Why don't people take it more seriously? most new ideas are nonsense. This is, a, this is the old Galileo Gambit. People say they ridiculed Galileo, they ridiculed Newton, they ridiculed Edison. Yeah, and they also ridiculed the guy who said he could go through walls and the guy who said he could go to the moon with, with, with wax wings. They did that because, and they deserved it. Most new ideas that get ridiculed deserve it. Those that are good survive and overcome the ridicule. All right. Jim, Jim I want to ask you something. Are you, have you uh, really looked into the evidence of this? How much? How, how many hours do I have to, do I have to spend? I like. Well, to okay. More. Have you read? Like well, have you read Dr. Jacobs' I'd like book? To, I like. Haven't you also written a book on this? I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, you've also done a lot of work with you. I've done a lot of research on a lot of stories, a lot of cases, uh, as, as and published material. We're talking about sightings. Have you looked, have you read Dr. Jacobs' book, for instance? I read his first book. I discovered I didn't okay. didn't believe half but of it. But the new book is the important. One. You know that I've had a I've had a NASA scientist <laughs> where you work. I've had a NASA scientist come to me for hypnosis and investigation of that particular scientist's abduction experiences. What, so we have two different opinions can, let, Let's NASA. work on how we can improve. Uh, NASA has, has opinions of all sorts, of course. like everyone does, yeah. like we all do here. The kind of stuff we have to get, the evidence that has to be persuasive for this kind of claim, is material, and I look forward to seeing these reports, is, is evidence, uh, is informational. We've had stories about contacts okay. where people have given I, information. I Pat, go ahead. About yeah. the ridiculous um, ideas 
You know, we used to think Christopher Columbus was ridiculous when he thought the Earth was round. I mean, well, that's a myth, Pat. That's a total myth. The whole world knew there was. He he was wrong. He thought the Earth was smaller than it really was. So don't go back to these well, kindergarten myths. I mean, he may not have used calipers. All right, let me just. Before, but it definitely wasn't flat. Before we go into no break, no one thought it was flat. It educated yeah. people in those days. That's that's God, something you must have saw in the Weekly Reader. We got history. We got book reviews. You had a comment, I think. Michael, you stated earlier that um, the doctor approached you as a control subject. It, isn't it possible that as a control subject that the, under hypnosis this idea could have been induced? You're absolutely right, and I'm glad you asked because Bud Hopkins was not the hypnotherapist. I went to an, uh, it was, he was a psychiatrist, I believe, and he was, he was more upset about this than I was. But couldn't, couldn't all of he these issues mask a different kind of fear of a different experience, uh, not necessarily sexual abuse, or it could have been any fearful experience. Everybody has fears. It could have just been an overwhelming well, fear of anything. Yeah, you're right. Number one, I did not expect the story, this story to come out at all. Number two, it was not Bud Hopkins who was leading me because he wasn't asking questions at all. And number three... Was he there? He was there. Okay. Yes. And, and much more... The, the, Go ahead. One, of the, one of the things about what comes out under hypnosis, I've had... Uh, roughly 30 people under hypnosis spontaneously describe symbols that they saw inside the ship on a wall or on a surface or something. Identical, virtually identical symbols. And when, at one point, I, it's never been published, I showed uh, some of the symbols to Pat after she had made her drawing of what these symbols were that she remembered, and it was virtually identical, she burst into tears because she was so upset at the confirmation that she felt about her own experience. Now, what hypnotist, what... Uh... But we've seen this, but where people under hypnosis are shown, and not, not by you, but other investigators, are shown pictures of a rogues gallery of UFO aliens and asked to pick out the ones who kidnapped them. We, we both know that. Well, that's okay. Abuse. All right. All right. Are there, are there any bad... We're going to jump there, in. Dr. Jacobs, hold that thought because we do have to jump over the break right area? now, but we'll yes, come back. Of course. Of course. Hello. Hello. talking about UFOs and abductions by aliens and you have a question or comment? Yes, I was wondering, has there ever been a large group, more than one or two people, that have sighted these UFOs? As a group collectively, you mean? Mm -hmm. I have yeah. at least two cases with seven people each, <clears throat> and there are many with five and four and three, and they all remember exactly the same thing. Okay, why do you ask that question? I was just wondering if maybe there was a party or <laughs> a UFO oh, somebody <laughs> showed up at a party. Yeah, book them for your prom. I can see it now. Okay, good. I was just wondering if they could tell me, um, do you believe that you're chosen, or do you think that there's a reason you were picked to be taken into this kind Very of... Very good question. Do you, have you gotten a sense that it's arbitrary? <laughs> is there a pattern? There is a pattern, basically, to these uh, uh, events. It seems to be random on a, uh, on a larger scale, a geographic scale, and a demographic scale, except that we do, we do find a fairly strong intergenerational aspect to this. That is to say, if one is abducted, there is a stronger possibility that one or both of one's parents were abducted as well. So it runs in families? It appears to run in families. That's a fair question. Yeah. I just want to emphasize a couple things, okay? Because you bring up some good points. I've never read a UFO book. I don't read the material. I haven't read my own story in Bud Hopkins' book in Missing Time, okay? There were no UFO movies that I had seen. In fact, it was long before Close Encounters came out. When you show me that picture of that Twilight Zone creature, it does nothing to me. When I hear Pat say a very particular thing in a very particular way, like she calls this one guy the doctor, it brings tears to my eyes. Why is that? I'm not nuts. Trust me, I'm not. I, I'm nuts, and I don't think anyone should say that. Anyone who does, I will stand by and say you're not either. But your experience may be more common, but less related to aliens uh, than, than we what may you, think. What do you suggest? Uh, what, I, I think it, we, we want to see what's on two sides here. One side, we have three people talking about very strong, powerful felt experiences, two investigators who work with some of these people, a psychiatrist who validates their experiences, and we have on the other side, uh, a space engineer 
uh, in the aerospace industry who rejects all this because you haven't got a piece of a UFO in your hand. And who hasn't even read the literature. And you don't know the literature. So, Jim... Uh, well, I do know I, the why, literature. Why I think... Wait a second, gentlemen. I do know the literature. Second, the literature. Just, just, excuse, yeah. me, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just let me make this point. I can appreciate what you're saying about now holding these people up to ridicule. That we're very glad that they're here to share their stories. Nobody's here to judge their stories. On the other hand, healthy debate and dialogue, I mean, people have to you know, hear what they're going to well, believe Willie in. Stringer, Jane, Willie Stringer's read it, and he doesn't believe it either. But Listen, Jacques Vallée doesn't believe it either. They're Why within the, the UFO scientific movement. scientific community so not, not talking just about this, Dr. Jacobs? Well, first of all, there's, that's a very complicated question about the role of the scientific community in studying this phenomenon over the years. Suffice it to say that the scientific community abrogated its responsibility to study the subject in the late 1940s and early 1950s and never did You're after that. You're reading from a book, it sounds like. Okay. I think this kind of debate, which is healthy in a way, but it's also preventing us from getting on with what these powerful experiences that are happening to so many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, what does this mean for this culture? A lot of the people who have these experiences, actually, when they face up to them and when they really go into it deeply, grow as human beings. Do you know what they, it means? I don't know what it means, but it certainly means something that could be maturing for us as a species if we faced up to it. All right, I agree a lot with, of hands I agree up with here. That. We've got to take a break. We'll be back. Back now talking about abductions by aliens. What's your comment or question? I just think it'd be real easy for all the stories to match because you read one book about it or see any shows and they all say the same thing so I can come up and say the same exact thing that everybody else is saying. What do you think's happening here? All right. Who has an answer when for this young woman? I was six years old, I hadn't seen anything about this. And the last thing I wanted to really believe is that this happened. Actually, the last thing I would want to believe is that I'm crazy. So I guess it's better that it happened. But... <laughs> about being studied, you know, you make it so hard uh, for people to come forward and I feel like every one of us has a little piece of the puzzle and there's no way you're going to get it assembled if, if you don't at least keep an open mind. All right. right. But you can, <laughs> I, I think there's some, it's an open mind and then there's a, there's a mind that's open enough your brain falls out and I think there are some extremes. All right. I'd like to ask Michael. Yeah, I'd like to ask you. Michael, when, his, when you told your story, you said it was five or six years later that you discovered that you were uh, taken by aliens and this all happened to you in Maryland. Then you said you were under hypnosis and Pat said it and Cindy. I'd like to know when and what made you go to uh, under hypnosis to begin with. I was a friend of Bud's and he was uh, basically, he needed to control. He asked me, he, he started using hypnosis for people who had had experiences. I, I, okay. No. Hypnosis? No. Um, Go ahead, Pat. I, I, I wanted to find out about this blue beam and the cops because during the interim of being upstairs and going outside, I lost three hours. But I waited two years before I contacted but you him. Went, you, you contacted him because you had a suspicion. I mean, the, the, the Sure, I knew what I saw suspicion. consciously. Um, and, you know, I, I knew that I couldn't go to bed and scrape my eye in a perfectly straight line. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you an example of what I mean. <clears throat> it took me two years to say this, that I had a dream one night and I woke up and I found this little thing in my arm. Now, I have no idea what this is. It looks like it could be a mole. On the inside? Feel it. Can't feel it. You'll see it's on the inside. And you, you don't know where that came from? I just knew that I woke up, I had a bad dream about these things one night, and I knew immediately to look at my arm. Did you have a dermatologist look at it? I had nobody look at it, no. But it took me two years to even mention it to anybody. And this is recently. Okay, we're going into another break. We'll be back. Bostonian Hotel in historic Faneuil Hall, Boston. A lot of people, not a lot of time.
with the proliferations of video cams that everybody seems to have in this country over the last five years, why hasn't anybody gotten even a shred of any kind of uh, UFO or Excuse aliens me. or, or you know, because all these uh, people have witnessed this stuff. I just wonder, someone must have grabbed a video cam there, or camera somewhere. There are many, many videotapes uh, showing purported UFOs, some up close, t relatively speaking to what we've had before. They're being analyzed by Dr. Bruce McAbee, who's an optical physicist who works for the Navy Department, does this on his own privately. Many videotapes. Okay. Can I get a question for James? See, okay, if we did give you physical evidence, would the government let it out? There are 185 governments in this world, 185 governments in this world, how they can't agree on anything. So how come they all agree on keeping the secrets? The U.S. is not the only country allegedly where it's happening. All right. We're going to have to let it end right there. We're out of time. I want to thank all of our folks up on the set. Fabulous guests, our audience, you for joining us. We'll see you back here next time. Until then, have a great day. Take care.